Hi there, welcome to Shop Podcast number 21. This one is all about designers. Um, I do have some yarn to show you next week, and that is the new Alpaca Elegance from Green Mountain Spinnery, but I didn't have quite enough time to do all the research to tell you all the background about that really fascinating yarn, so I'm going to leave that and instead just tell you a little bit about design work. Um, sometimes here in the shop, you folks will come in and you'll have a project in mind, but you don't have a pattern yet, or you'll have a pattern that you found off the internet and ask us for help with either choosing yarns or understanding it. And what I wanted to talk about is the difference between free patterns from someone who's not a designer, a free pattern from a yarn company, free patterns from an online knitting magazine like Knitty, and then paid patterns from individual designers or from yarn companies. Um, they're all good. There's pros and cons to all of them. Some of them involve, you know, the con is that you have to pay for it. Um, but then there's a lot of pros involved too. So first of all, I will show you some different things just so you can kind of see the quality of what's out there. So in the context of free from a designer, just on their website, is this. This is my color flow wrap. And I made it free because all it is is knitting a giant tube and then cutting it open and doing some knotting on the end. So I didn't feel really good about charging money for that. Um, not a whole lot involved to it, just a little bit of talking about the colors and then I did a quick little not elegant photo tutorial of how to cut it open, but not a lot of work in it and not a lot of margin for issues due to errors. Okay, so no big deal. I didn't need to put that through test knitters. It was fine. Um, item number two. This is also a free thing, but this is in my Ravelry project notes and it's not in the patterns and I'm not charging for it and I'm not calling it a pattern because I haven't spent the time to document it. I haven't run it past a half dozen test knitters to make sure they understand my wording. And based on the number of questions I get just about people trying to knit it off of my project notes, the wording needs some work. So I haven't put that time in yet, so I'm not ready to charge money for it yet. I'm not ready to put my name behind it as a designer yet. So it's just a project in my project notes and people are welcome to go and follow that if they want, but I don't advertise it as a project that's available for purchase or even for free because it's not ready yet. Another shawl, this is Coquille. It's also free, but unlike the other ones, this one is posted on knitty.com. Uh, I think it came out last fall. It's been through a technical editor, and it's actually probably Mandy, who's one of our instructors here. She's been Knitty's main technical editor for a number of years. Um, and the reason why it's free is that Knitty gets a lot of advertisers, so they are paying for editor who is Amy Singer and they're paying for the tech editor who is Mandy and they're paying for the website space and to make all that available which means we will have a pattern sample like this knit up on our store but in order to actually give you the sample while abiding by or to give you the pattern while abiding by Nitty's rules we need you to go directly to their website because they make their income from having people exposed to the advertising on their website that means it's not fair for us to deprive them of that income by taking away the exposure to the advertisers, so we need to follow their rules. So, another source of free patterns. And then, this glorious thing is a paid pattern, and this is the Charlotte's Web Shawl by Koigu, and the designer doesn't charge a whole lot for the pattern. There are some lace patterns these days that are in the $20 area. This is a little bit less than that. Um, the designer who created this is using it to sell her yarn, which is the Koigu, um, the multicolored variegated yummy sock yarns. And she has been through a lot of work to get good photographs to work on the writing. I'm sure she used test knitters. And she's gone through the whole process of making sure that her pattern is readable, understandable, and can be successful in it by you, the consumer. So there's a whole bunch of different reasons why people would choose whether to charge or not. Um, in some cases, yarn companies, um, so Koigu is a, fairly, is a smaller yarn company, they tend to do paid patterns because they're just not on the scale of being able to support themselves solely through free patterns and the sale of their yarns. But this one, I've been showing you this in the last little while, this is the Peter Easy Vest by Barocco, and it's all done. And if you went on our Facebook page, you would see pictures of Paul wearing the vest and modeling for me, which was awesome. And the free patterns that Barocco make available, they tend to, again, be on the easier side of design stuff, so there's not a whole lot of room for error, or there's not a whole lot of potential for errors to be in a simple pattern like this. They may go through technical editors, maybe a couple test knitters, 
but not a whole lot of designer hours have been put into this vest. So it's something that they're willing to put out there for free. Goodwill towards knitters. Hopefully you will choose to use their yarns to make it, which I have. Blackstone tweed. It's yummy. Now, another one from Broco is this vest. Get that flipped around that way. And this is also in the Blackstone tweed, but it's the chunky. And this is from one of their booklets. So booklets are another option for people who are selling yarn to make a booklet available. It's usually not as expensive as a full hardcover book. It usually doesn't have a ton of different photos of each project. Um, and it's usually at a lower price point because the printing is a little bit cheaper and also because they are still selling it with the intention of driving sales for their yarns. So Barocco works with Nora Gon as their lead designer, uh, Cerulea Rose, and I've forgotten the third woman. They actually just put, put a posting up for someone else. So if you know anyone else who wants to, to live in the Rhode Island area and who's a knitting designer, send them to Barocco because they're hiring another assistant designer for their team. Um, but they're trying to encourage people to try their yarns, and they do that through having really amazing designs that are available for sale. Or you'll also sometimes see that the Barocco design team, or one of, um, whether it's Nora or Cerulea, you'll see their names in magazines like Vogue Knitting, Interweave, and they have designed something for that issue, but it specifically will still use the yarn that they work for, so in their case it's from Barocco. Which is kind of interesting stuff, hey? Um, when I'm designing for a magazine, so I've been designing for Knit Scene and I've done some things for Twist Collective, they're asking me when I send in my sketch and submission, say, I'd like to do this for you if you like it, and it would take this weight and worse it, or you know, this much of DK weight yarn, then they'll go to their advertisers, again, you know, people who are supporting them, and ask for yarn supplies to make the garments, because probably about 75% of you will knit a project in the yarn that it calls for when it's available, and then another 75% of those people will knit it in the exact same color that the sample was made in. It's pretty cool, but interesting. Um, but again, making that connection that advertising and having samples done up in a yarn, it's another way for them to generate sales for their company. So when you folks come in and you've got a free pattern and it's just from someone who's written up some notes about something they made and they think it's cool and they want to share it, that's awesome and we totally understand where they're coming from. But the flip side is a lot of those free patterns, especially if it's from someone at their first or second design ever, they won't have run it through test knitters. They won't have had a second set of eyes looking for mistakes. They probably didn't pay for a, a tech editor or a set of um, sample knitters or test knitters to run through it. And so when you folks come in and you need help and you're going, well, I don't understand this, and we look at the pattern and go, well, we don't understand it either. The, the unfortunate but true thing is that a lot of the free patterns will tend, they're more likely to have mistakes or errors or math problems or a lack of understandability in their instructions. Like, um, So the payoff is, yes, you didn't pay for it, there's no money outlay, but then your frustration level goes up higher. Um, one of the better ideas, if you are looking for a free pattern, particularly using Ravelry, which we think is one of the best resources for, knit for knitters these days, is to go to the the area that you're looking for. So if you're looking for a hat, go into the advanced search section. If you are looking for free, click on free, then click to popular. And the patterns that have been knit by thousands of users are most likely the ones that are easy to understand. And there won't be any mistakes at this point because a number of people have already made it, less likely that there'll be errors that someone hasn't reported and had changed. Uh, the probably worst route to go is to find the brand new pattern that someone just posted. It's their first pattern. Um, and you look at their description of it, and it's a little bit too casual. They don't have any background with doing design work or working with anyone else or another yarn company. And no one else has made it yet. So just kind of, I'm not going to say that they will always have mistakes, but be aware that there is the possibility of running into that. Now, the flip side is this is not to say that free patterns are always horrid and paid patterns are always good. Um, all of the major knitting magazines, Interweave, Vogue Knitting, uh, Twist Collective, including a pattern of mine, um, have errata pages because sometimes going through all the tech ed editors and, and the designers looking through the pattern over and over again after formatting, before formatting, mistakes get through the gap. So um, I thought, hey, I'm doing great. I've got a perfect record. And then Laura, my little leafy hood that just came out, had four mistakes in it that I didn't catch on three read-throughs and the technical editors didn't either. 
and then the first three people who bought the pattern and were really keen and gung-ho to be the first people to get it done, they found issues. So there was a something in one of my charts that was missing, there was an instruction for a small leaf and a large leaf that didn't add up, and a couple other things like that. Ooh. Um, so something else to check for. If you're struggling with the pattern and it's got issues and you don't know what's going on, take a quick moment to go online, visit the publisher's website, and search for errata or corrections or mistakes. Those are the three different words that can actually tell you um, where they put the pages that have any issues like that. There will also often be a note on that patterns page on Ravelry. So again, scrolling down, looking for errata, and that can get you back on the right track if there is an issue. They also tend to be a little bit more willing to answer email questions. So if you've done that search and you're still having problems, go ahead and talk to the yarn manufacturer or the designer about the issue that you're having. If you need a faster response, uh, you can also go onto Ravelry itself and post something in the patterns forum and someone will probably respond to you in about three minutes or less because they're that cool over there. But um, yeah, I, I wanted to give you a little bit, a little bit of background about that. If you're interested in learning more about designing, particularly my trip from being a non-published designer to where I am right now, uh, I used to do a video or an audio podcast. It's called Kristenitz. You can find it by going to my knitting website, which is kristenitz.com. And there are a series of audio podcasts. Um, I think I got up to episode nine or so. I do intend to go back to it. You'll if you listen to episode nine. That's before I actually got published on Twist. Um, so the information is, you know, way back when for my fledging days, but it's still kind of fascinating, I think. Um, but I will add a little bit more details about the life and trials and tribulations of being a designer in future podcasts, and hopefully you'll be interested. If you do have specific questions, please feel free to leave them for me on the Facebook page or on the YouTube channel, or pop in the store on a Monday or Thursday. I'll be happy to answer. And sorry for being absent for the last two weeks. I had some health issues that have now mostly resolved, so I'm feeling much better. Thank you, and hopefully I will be back next week, and I will show you the lovely, lovely yarn from Green Mountain Spinnery. In the meantime, have a great week. I'll talk to you soon.